Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Batuhan. I'm a student from Turkey. Uh, in this session we are going to talk about CPython's memory management. CPython is the uh, major implementation of Python language. And there are other implementations like PyPy with their own memory management. And there are implementations like Python and Iron Python. Uh, they use their uh, written language memory management. For example, Python uses JVM's memory management. Uh, this talk contains a lot of implementation detail, so you can uh, mostly find uh, stuff uh, in docs. Yeah. Why should you learn uh, memory management concepts? It will, your, it will show you behind the curtain. For an example, uh, you may think uh, why you uh, why Python doesn't release memory back to the system, or how it uh, finds and detects uh, cyclic references. All of them has an answer in behind the curtain. Uh, you are going to learn how to control it. Python has an uh, interface for all uh, internal things like abstract syntax tree they mentioned, parser, and it has an interface for garbage collector. You can control it. Uh, there are helper functions like uh, sys.getRefCount. You can learn status of an object in memory. Uh, although it seems unnecessary to learn them, uh, Instagram increased their performance by 10% with uh, disabling or enabling PC whenever they need. Uh, you are going to handle memory links, uh, uh, find them and trace them into source with understanding of memory management. Allocation of memory, uh, memory management we can uh, examine memory management in two sections, allocation and the allocation. Uh, before we start, uh, don't forget everything is an object in Python. So in that memory, um, everything can be objects. Uh, every Python object has two common fields. One is reference count and the other one is uh, object itself. Reference count uh, is the count of total references made to that object. If you set A to uh, 10 and B to 10, you will increase uh, 10's reference count by 2. And if you delete or set A and B to another object, you will decrease reference count by 2. If an object's reference count reaches 0, it will immediately be allocated. But there are some cases, like object uh, reference itself, and uh, it couldn't detect by reference count uh, manager. So there is a GC. And there are uh, op type pointer. It points object itself. Uh, it contains value of object, type of object, name of object, every attribute of an object. It is memory management model of uh, C Python. Uh, in the uh, top layer, layer three, there's Python objects and some of internal stuff. Uh, in the layer two, there's our Python's object allocator. It abstracts memory and uh, uh, manages objects. In the layer one, there is Python's raw memory allocator. It ensures there is enough space in heap. If not, it requests memory from layer zero. Layer zero is a system allocator. If you didn't change anything or and using a standard Linux distribution, uh, it might be malloc. And in bottom layers, there are physical and low things we are not uh, talk about. Python divides objects into sections. Uh, if an object bigger than small object threshold, uh, it's called as big. If not, uh, it's called as small. Small object threshold is a static constant that defined in opmalloc.c in CPython repository. It's 512 bytes by default. Big objects, uh, it's not one of our concerns. Uh, Python directly routes big objects to a system allocator. Uh, with a set of wrappers. Small objects, uh, they manage it by layer two uh, with three level of abstractions. The first one is blocks, they encapsulate Python objects. Uh, and pools, uh, pools encapsulate same size blocks and their size is four kilobytes, same as a virtual memory page. And there are arenas, they contain 64 pools. Blocks, first level of abstractions. Uh, the size of uh, block determined with 8 byte alignment notation. For an example, you have 30 byte sized object. 
uh, it will be put to the 32 byte size block and whenever your uh, object is allocated python can put another object in a range of size in a range of 25 to 32 to that same block uh, it brings optimization and th there is size idx value uh, it has pools to contain same size blocks uh, implementation of blocks uh, they designed for containing python objects they use 8 byte align notation uh, for better management of free blocks and they mark as free and link to free blocks list of their pools when their object they allocated pools uh, they encapsulate same size blocks uh, their size 4 kilobytes every uh, pool has a pool header over it it contains uh, a list of free blocks uh, next and previous pools the arena index of memory the size IDX of blocks inside and some memory stuff uh, pool says free block uh, list uh, the list contains free blocks and uh, whenever a, a block free it inserts that list there are states of blocks uh, used means it's neither empty nor full uh, at this one uh, block is free and at this one block is currently used the full means uh, there is uh, no currently available blocks and the empty means uh, every block is empty and it will be linked to uh, free pools list of the, its arena <coughs> arenas they encapsulate pools <coughs> there is an overhead uh, like pools and they are double linked list with next arena pre arena pools their size uh, 256 kilobytes <coughs> system allocator only allocates uh, space for arenas and uh, the other Abstractions use space for uh, arena space, uh, and uh, Python only uh, relays memory back to the system when all pools uh, is empty in that arena. Uh, object specific. There are some object specific cases uh, that's related with memory management. For example, string hitarnik. Uh, Python uh, in, stri in Python strings are immutable sequence of Unicode, so uh, Python can reference same string twice instead of creating any string in every operation. We call it string interning. Uh, if a string is simple, <coughs> it will be interned and uh, doesn't create twice. Uh, twice. Uh, simple strings are ASCII letters, digits, and uh, underscores. Uh, for example, but one is a simple string. And this happens in compile time, so function calls and constructors uh, doesn't affect that. And there is small integers. Uh, it's an optimization for C Python. Python uh, pre-allocates uh, integers between uh, negative 5 to 20. 256 uh, there are uh, internal references to the uh, integers and it, it brings optimizations there is garbage collection before we start uh, uh, talking about garbage collection don't forget Python uh, has not uh, variables it has uh, names instead and b uh, difference between names and variables names only points to an object that lives in heap uh, variables contains objects value uh, reference is the pointer to that object that lives in heap and reference count as I mentioned the total references made to that object there's good size and best size of uh, reference counting it's easy to find unused objects and uh, it doesn't require a marking time uh, like in uh, mark and sweep uh, but uh, there are bad sites like uh, it ha every Python object contains a reference count field and it costs an object over it. It doesn't support for cyclic references and uh, it is one of the reasons of GIL. If GIL doesn't exist and two thread tries to increase an uh, object's ref uh, n values reference count, uh, it will cause memory leaks. 
and that will be bad. And there is generational GC for uh, cyclic references. Python uh, runs this GC uh, periodically. Uh, it uses an algorithm called Markan sweep. Uh, cyclic references are uh, re references that reference itself. For an example, if you add a list itself, uh, the list reference itself, and the uh, values inside the list reference the list and the reference counting can couldn't detect that. So mark and sweep marks every reachable object and sweeps rest. And uh, the reachable objects uh, get next to the next generation. Uh, and these generations help, you to help uh, GC to find cyclic references easily. So uh, how to track or uh, manage them. Python has uh, internal stuff. Like you see, uh, GC uh, is a uh, interface to garbage collector. There is a function here that uh, creates a list, and this appends itself. Uh, I call it uh, 10 times. Then I call gc.collect. It, call, uh, it uh, runs mark and sweep operation and uh, returns total amount of uh, collected objects here. And before that, I disabled uh, automatic gc. So uh, it doesn't start uh, without my uh, command. Uh, then I called it. And you can see there's 10 objects freed. Uh, and you can check if an object tracked by Garbage collector, uh, by the default, atomic, uh, atomic types is not going to be uh, tracked, and non-atomic types is going to be tracked. Uh, there is, uh, if you have ever written a C extension to Python, or used a C module, or uh, you saw a Python application that consumes more memory than it needs. Uh, there might be a memory leak. So in Python 3, there's a module uh, came. It's called trace malloc. Uh, it traces uh, malloc operations and helps you to find uh, memory leaks. Uh, it is a start function. It takes frames. I'm just using one frame here. But if you have a complex code, you can, you can increase that frames amount. Uh, then I take a snapshot. Snapshot contains relevant information about malloc. And you can take uh, more snapshots and compare snapshots. They can be compared. Uh, then I uh, access the stats of a snapshot and get trace back. It is the biggest memory block. And then I print relevant information about that. Trace malloc is a pretty cool module, and it has a great API and uh, for the Python. Uh, and there is debug malloc stats. Uh, it's a raw uh, interface of trace malloc. Here, uh, this is a Pythonic interface, and this is a raw interface of malloc. Uh, there is, uh, you can call it with sys dot uh, debug malloc stats, or you can set an environment variable to uh, some things. Uh, there are different Python uh, memory allocates, for example, malloc or pi malloc, or you can write your own memory allocator. Python is a flexible language, uh, it supports uh, uh, new uh, memory allocators. So, any questions? That's it. Okay. Thank you for listening.